So we are redigging these posts for these beams. Someone installed these beams before, but the problem comes in where the posts were never ever cemented in, it just moves in the soft ground. So the beams keep on going out of alignment. What we're going to do is we're going to dig the base up and we're going to plant a solid cement foundation and then realign the beams. Alright, so now we've dug this beam, we've dug this, this beam post in the ground, we filled it with um, a mix of 40 kilograms of concrete mix, it's now busy setting, you can see it's a nice deep foundation, uh, in the soft earth this should keep it quite firm before we align it. Um, we use standard, um, standard concrete mix available from your normal hardware shop. The concrete stand and stone mix makes a nice firm mixture, a good foundation. Alright, so while this mix is busy, um, that, while that foundation is busy setting, Jody and Dylan are over there um, and they're busy digging the foundation for the other beam posts that's spaced about 30 meters away. The best thing with beams is while beams can can be bypassed by intruders simply just crawling below it a good beam solution is when the beams are split so far apart as in this case that an intruder will not be able to see them readily in the middle of the night an intruder coming from from a, a garden quite far away through bush would not locate these beams and he would walk between this these two beam posts and would trigger the alarm before he would actually even know that there are beams installed you see this beam post is in some um, quite some solid ground here but it's still soft earth it still allows it to move so we'll dig this about one and a half feet deep two feet deep and then we'll fill it also with another 40 kilograms of uh, concrete mix okay so we see the previous installers they did put a concrete base in but you can see they put two smaller concrete base in and the problem is that the whole base is moving around in, this, in the soft earth so that's no good we're obviously going to put a much larger base we're going to set the foundation properly all right so now you can see we've thrown the um we've thrown the base in it's got a big base of concrete thrown in dug a nice firm hole and that when that dries and sets we'll cover it with the sand and that will be a that'll be quite a good okay so stay two we've come back um, this is the the beam post there you can see a nice solid foundation a nice solid foundation we're gonna start um, throwing in now this. Um, yeah that's nice and solid you can see it's gonna replace check that beam out um, but yeah it's a good solid foundation a beam post is now not gonna get anywhere all right um, so we'll fill this one up um, and then we can look into the, the other beam posts as well. Okay, so the base is now closed, it's nice and firm. We're now going to align the beams. This is the transmitter side of the beam. What we do here is we just do a visual alignment to make sure that this side can look more or less at the, um, at the receiver side. Okay. So I'll do now, I'll do a visual alignment. Okay, I can see the other side coming to focus. Now I've got that beam, and that beam is pretty much in alignment now. So we'll come back and we'll test it after we've tested the other, after we've aligned the other side. So what you have to do is, um, very important, when you um, when you align beams, you have to align the receiver and the transmitter. Um, both beams need to be brought into alignment for you. Um, now your beam, your, your transmitter sends out the current, it transmits the beam, which is coming about in this direction here, and that gets picked up by the receiver. The receiver also must be angled at the actual transmitter so that um, I can, I can collect this infrared that's busy picking up. 
What's nice about this unit is it's actually got a nice LED status on the actual beam which shows um, that it's picking up very good and it can also show when it's in alarm or when the actual beam is broken. You can see in the lights there. So I'm going to do the, the visual alignment now. I'll do the visual alignment first. Um, looking to get that beam. Okay. See it coming into focus. Okay, so now I've got to just heighten this a little bit. Um, it's looking a little bit low down so I'm going to simply just angle the beams now so that it comes higher up and looks more at the other beam and there I've pretty much nearly got it on target um, you can look at that now and you can hear the beam is starting to click as it sees as it's, as it's starting to see the transmitter it's seen the beam from the other end okay yeah and that's pretty good. you'll see now that the red alarm light is off the level there is showing good um, it's, it's picking up very nice it's picking up a strong infrared beam from the other side the transmitter which we just um, which we just set in and the red light is off you'll see when, when I block the beams the alarm light now comes on the alarm red light is now on and when I'm out the way, like in time for the beam to reset, the good level is all on. It's got its power, the alarm light is off, so the beams are now um, perfectly aligned um, 9 out of 10, 10 out of 10, which is very, very good. Bear in mind also that these beams, it's got two beams. Uh, most infrared beams you'll see actually it's working off two beams, where the one beam can actually be um, blocked and the alarm light still won't go off. Very useful for falling leaves or twigs which get in the way. And then do not trigger the, the actual beam and um, you can also set the time that the beam must be interrupted for before it goes into an alarm you can see these are quite quick so even just something that passes through and um, the links there for a while will trigger it off and um, these are triggered very nicely okay I think that's all about how to set up and line a beam and how to make sure your beams stay effective what you need to do which we're going to do now as well is a lot of people forget this, um, and I've seen it many times in the industry, is the beams aren't sealed. And what happens is because of the electrical apparatus, you're always going to get insects that come in these small holes. Um, you've got your small mounting holes, your your um, your wire, your, what they call the cable entry holes, any little crevice that the an ant, um, ants love to infest beam units and also geckos. And what happens is when you get ants that block these lenses, and um, it's going to cause false alarms on any outdoor equipment so we always recommend sealing your outdoor sensors well with a thin layer of glue um, or silicone around your cable entries and also around the seam of the actual unit inspect it for any open beams um, I think if you do that you'll have many many years of trouble free reliable operation Yeah, so very important. Now the final things after it's been walk tested is to seal the actual the beams with silicone. What they use is seal the cable entries, seal it properly so that no um, so that no insects can get inside of that, and then it'll be good to go. Okay, hold on.